Hello, welcome to the latest edition of the Business Spotlight podcast. I'm joined today by Cole Salcom, and he is managing partner with Lewis Denley Solicitors. So, welcome to the call, Cole. Thank you, Gavin. Thanks for having me on. Excited to run through this. Well, it was interesting to to be talking to you because I know that you're very passionate about how law practice should be performed in your view. So let's start by asking a little bit about the company, what you do and why you do it. Fantastic. So Lewis Bentley Solicitors has a number of practice areas. So it's a bit of a, a commercial property as well as private client and family generally. Uh, growing firm, we established in 2017 with the idea of if you want to do it our way, then we're going to have to set up on our own and not be hindered by any sort of archaic practices. And we grew from strength to strength, two people to now about 25 people. So it's been a great journey in the last seven years. That's that's very rapid growth over, over that period of time and in challenging circumstances as well. Yes, yeah, it's been a <laughs> steep learning curve, but uh, successful so far, so it's very happy. So it seems as though you, you, you've you hit a bit of, upon a, some kind of magic formula here. You you alluded to the traditional practices of, of other law firms. What is it that you're really trying to pull away from, particularly? Yeah, it's, it's about working in a more efficient way through the use of technology. And obviously lawyers are very important. I don't think AI is going to take away everyone's jobs, but using technology and software just to make things more effective, more efficient and give clients a better service um, can really allow lawyers to focus on their job and go back to that main point of giving great service in an effective way. It's and really using, using technology as part of the means by, by which to do that. Yes, it can take away a lot of the administrative staff. We're a paperless office, so all those efficiencies allows us to hire staff anywhere over sort of the country or the world and allows us to distribute post paper communications, case management, all that kind of stuff in a very effective way, which means we have very few needs for the slower administration process because we try and automate whatever we can through client portals as well as workflows and all the sort of basic stuff that allows you to function with a lot more efficiency. And is the is your main driver for this um, the fact that the industry is changing very rapidly and one needs to be adaptable and flexible in order to change? Is that one of your key motivators for for bringing you know sort of technological approach and systems into your practice? I think what you said then is fundamental, hits the nail on the head. But whether it's not necessarily a, a key motivator, um, we'd like to think that we're just part of that moving forward process. So it's not we're not trying to do that to get ahead. We're trying to do that because we think that's what the bar should be and is be. So it's not, um, right. we, if you need to keep up, that's just the base standard that we want to set. We want to go higher and do more with software. Yeah. But um, that will help us excel, but that will also be make us more efficient as a business, uh, staff happiness, all that kind of stuff. So when you're, one motivator. Okay, so when you're looking at your clients and who you're going to be working with, is this is this something that, features as part of your your marketing, your PR, or is it just there in order to help support your clients, you know, through commercial law, whatever other aspects of law that you're you're dealing with, or is it actually part, in essence, of how you present yourself to, to future prospects? It does come across in the way that we present ourselves with a predominant factor because it makes their lives easier. So if we have someone call up, want a quote for whatever it is, you can say, look, that's fine. We'll send you all our digital stuff and you can be ready to go by this afternoon. Um, so that's not our only selling point. We're very good at what we do as well, but people will see that and think, wow, that's fantastic. And if you want to sign something, you can sign it digitally and just letting them know that that ease of communication and ease of working is, is effectively a selling point, but in the background as well, it makes our lawyers jobs easier and all that effective yeah. working style better as well. Cause I'm just, I'm just thinking about the dynamic here between features and benefits, because everything that a lot of what you just described earlier was about the features about how you do your business and why you do it the way that you do. But of course, uh, your customers and also, I guess, the people who are going to come and work for you are going to look at the whole thing through the eyes of the benefits that they're going to see. In, in yeah, exactly. Of, yeah. Yeah. And the two, the two far ends of the spectrum are, from a business point of view, you're strictly business, your profit margins are higher because you're not hiring people to do dictation and secretarial work. That's all been automated for you. So your costs are lower. So you're making more money in that cold sense, but also the effect of all the software and, and the utilization of all that that's being used gives your customers the end result, a much better and more efficient service. And in the middle there is your lawyers that are, that are working in a cleaner, crisper, um, more effective way as well. I'm wondering how it impacts on some of the more traditional aspects of 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 being a lawyer, though, being a fear owner, because 
I've worked with and working with with law firms, and one of the things I'm aware of, for example, is that you know normally a fee earner is going to be employed and expected to produce a multiple of their salary in terms of generating work. So if you're looking at your profit margins, if you're looking at how you do business to improve those as well and the effectiveness, does that change that dynamic as well? Does that change those sort of typical multiples that you might be looking at in terms of somebody that you might bring on as a fee earner and saying, look, this is what we expect from you and this is what we're going to have in place to support you doing that? Would you yes, it, it definitely does. Because as I said, if you look at that cold business approach and you can yeah. the ability to make more money, what's important there for us is we pass that back on to the staff and, and to the client. So we're very much pushing that you shouldn't need to work more than nine to five to achieve your, you know, whatever your targets may be. And our, our billable targets are, are lower than most other firms because of the way that we can hopefully make our lawyers work more effectively um, and things like that. And those costs can be also passed on to clients as well. So rather than just keep charging full whack and, and then you can pass those costs on to your clients that you're saving to give a more eff effective sort of an efficient service for them as well. So hopefully if you spread it out and don't become too greedy, everyone's a winner. Lawyers are work, work life balance is better and customers are getting a better service at a better rate in theory. That's um, fantastic. I mean, yes, coming back to the benefits, you, you've just highlighted them there, haven't you? For the fee earner, you know, lower billable sort of ceilings and also a, a, a better work-life balance, although I don't like the term work-life balance, but, you know, the better opportunity to do more with your time. Yes, that's, yeah, that's, exactly. That's really fascinating. Yeah. Um, you you mentioned AI, basically, in, in passing. I'm also aware that blockchain um, is having an impact on, on how law firms um, do business. What do you see as the major changes coming on down the line, even even in this new space that you're in and in, in how you do things? What, what are the future challenges going to be for... Um, for the we'll keep this short because it's, a bit, of, it, well. yeah, again, it's a bit of a rabbit hole. But yeah. um, well, I think AI is going to change the industry very much for the better, unless you're a secretary or someone that works in admin. Because I, I see those yeah. roles coupled with a good case management system and automation and AI that can really make those roles redundant. So your lawyers will never be replaced because that critical thinking is a long way away from being replaced. So I think that software and AI will enhance the admin for a law firm and, and make their ability to work more effectively really improved um blockchain i love the idea of blockchain um it gets very much caught up with anti-money laundering problems but an easy way to move money is, is a great thing but i think blockchain is probably a long way from having any decent conversation or an effect on the way that an everyday lawyer works for now anyway that's interesting to hear but you did say something there that was i thought really really fascinating because it it's going to resonate with many many other businesses who are facing the challenge of ai and you said AI is not going to replace critical thinking. And, you know, when we have these discussions around AI and how they're going to impact on jobs and what have you, and, you know, why would you employ a person if if in artificial intelligence can do this, that, and the other? It, it's the critical thinking aspect, isn't it? It's the ability to rationalize. It's the ability to look at the nuances. It's the ability to make decisions that are based more on just the data that's in front of you, but the wider context of the challenge and the situation. Um, yes, yeah, 100%. What I think AI will get better at, but can't do at the moment necessarily, is think outside the box without a lot of detailed prompting. And I think that box will get sort of bigger and bigger because AI will start to get better and better. But you look at your, I don't know, an Einstein compared to your average brain, he was he, the critical thinking element was much, much higher. And um, AI is a long way from being covering all that critical element. I don't know whether it ever can, but um, yeah. It will get a lot better and things yeah. basic standard services like giving advice on a document AI oh, can do that now so that lawyer is, is almost redundant but mm. giving advice on that document that needs to be changed in a certain way for a certain reason AI oh, won't be able to understand those reasons straight away without a lot of prompting so that's where the lawyer will do it more efficiently i believe for now no, I, I find that really yeah I, I totally agree you won't know this call but my in a previous life i was a physicist and uh and I'm aware that Einstein did a lot of his thinking, did Gedanken experiments, all thought experiments. So he was able to conceptualize ideas in his mind, um, didn't need a laboratory to sort of work his way through um, various theories and proposals. So I, I think that's absolutely fascinating. Um, yes. I just want to ask you, which came first for you, your interest in law or your interest in technology, or perhaps not which came first, but which has been the main sort of impetus for you in terms of what you're doing now? Oh, it's actually swung in roundabouts, if that's the right saying. So as a 
kid I was one of the generations that grew up with the Sega Master System when that first came out and all those things and that just wowed me absolutely fantastic and then you had the Game Boy and that, I thought that was fantastic <laughs> I didn't get my first mobile phone until I was 19 but even that was amazing so I was always wowed by all that kind of stuff and what that could bring um, career-wise I didn't think of technology when I started my, my law career but then when we opened the firm Lewis Denley we knew then that um, we really wanted to get right into legal technology and use technology to maximise it, or to the point now where we created a, a legal tech company where we've built a case management system for law firms because what we found was out there wasn't good enough. We wanted to get into the software and make something that was better and actually worked and bring the industry forward. So um, it, it has really done a full circle. So. Carl, it's been fascinating to to hear your thoughts um, today and, and sharing um, you know what inspires you and, and what you're doing within this space. It's an exciting space to be in. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Gavin. Very, very enjoyable. Thanks, mate. We'll speak soon.